Tony Khan welcomes us to Dynamite. Says he can't travel. Would like to be in Winnipeg. But uh, suddenly we're losing him. He did mention that uh, Jack Perry was reinstated before he was cut off. Technical difficulties in Jacksonville. So the Young Bucks are in the booth in Winnipeg. They say they're not fired because they have ironclad contracts with the Founders Clause. These contracts also state that if Tony Khan is unreachable, they will be running the show. So let's run the new show open, which is the Dynamite theme with highlights of nothing but the Elite. Okay, that was funny. I laughed at that. I like this. I like yeah. this. This this is a storyline. This is a weekly episodic storyline. And I think that AEW needs more of these. Where you know when you tune in next week, you're going to see more of this. Tony can't travel. So we know we're going to get several weeks of this storyline. So I, I think that these are the kind of things they need, and this was good. Swerve comes out for a promo. The World Heavyweight Champion being presented front and center as their biggest star. A novel concept. He notes he had three matches in three shows in one week. He's the champion, the fighting champion AEW deserves. Buries the childish, greedy EVPs. Think they can do whatever they want. That's a bitch move, he says. But first in his plate is who's going to be his challenger at double or nothing. So the Bucks appear on the screen. First, they note they are also champions. Then they say your first promo after winning the title, you bury us and you use profanity. That's a fine. Dick Jackson jumps and goes, that's a fine. And you can just hear the fans start laughing well, at how he delivered. That's a fine. Because Nick is funny. He is. Yes. He's a naturally funny guy. He can say anything and it's funny. His understated delivery. I know that's yes. the wrong word. I, it is understated delivery. Compared to Matthew. Yes. Because Matthew will use lots of words. Yes. And uh, Nick will just get to the point. He picks his spots. Right. Yeah, yeah. So Matthew explains they have a perfect challenger, a great Canadian wrestler, a former champion. Out comes Christian Cage, along with his, his whole crew. Christian takes the mic, but then his cheap shot swerve in the face. Swerve fights back. Eventually, uh, well, he's beaten up all three of the dudes, but he sees Mother Wayne and freezes. That lets them cut him off, and he gets a kill switch in the belt. A Wayne's world for Prince Nana. No one ever puts their hands on Prince Nana. Nick Wayne laid him out. Now Christian cuts his promo. I have not forgotten when you left my son Nick in a pool of his own blood. We were a tag team in the biggest show ever. You lost. You embarrassed me. No better time than right now to make you pay for your mistakes now that you've won this championship. Last week you mentioned your daughter. I am a better father than you could ever be. Buries the Winnipeg Jets and uh, promises the pain has just begun. And then kill switch the dinosaur. Yanks a dreadlock off a of swerve's head. This is what you do with your champion. You make him the centerpiece of the show from the jump, put him in the spotlight, and do something with him to set up something with him down the road. I was a big fan of this. Yeah, I think they're going to have a really good match. Obviously, one of the criticisms is, well, the last time we saw Christian, he did a job, and then he vanished, and now he's coming back for a world title match. And not just a world title match. A pay-per-view. A pay-per-view. Yes. Okay. Now, I think the match is going to be good. I'm still going to buy it. If you have that criticism, you are perfectly, you know, it's in your right to have that criticism. Because this is not a strong pay-per-view main event, especially for Double or Nothing. And, you know, yesterday I saw a lot of people get upset about that. And they're like, well, what about what about Cody and AJ? How, how is that any different? Well, first off, we don't need to compare everything to WWE. But the fact of the matter is uh, WWE is on fire. And so they can do AJ Styles and Cody and like everything is going to be fine, and they're going to roll around. Or they're going to roll along and do huge business. But AEW is not in that position right now. And the other difference is that uh, AJ Cody match is on Peacock. It's four ninety five. If you want to watch that match, it's four ninety five. And this show is going to be forty nine ninety five. Is that where they are now? I can't even remember. I think more. They're they're uh, depending on on the service that you buy it. Yeah. I, th I think if you're overseas, it's cheaper. But the point is, you got to pay a lot of money for this. And so, you know, there is a difference. You cannot make a, f a straight comparison between AJ and Cody and Christian and, uh, and uh, I almost called him Killshot, uh, Swerve Strickland. It's yeah. just, it's, it's not fair. One, one company, I'm sorry, needs to work harder because they're fighting from the bottom. The other company is coasting along doing enormous business. And so they can, they have the opportunity to not have to do those sorts of things. So it's not a fair comparison, but the match should be good. The match should be good. I, if, if you don't think it's a strong main event, I'm not going to uh, uh, convince you otherwise. But I will say, at least from a logical storytelling standpoint, it makes sense why he's coming off a loss and getting this title shot two months later because the Bucks just like him and they're doing it to screw with the swerve. 
Yes. That's fine. They, they have totally dropped the rankings yet again. Well, but I don't want to say anything because a while ago they dropped the rankings, and then randomly Tony just said, here's the rankings for this month, which played into nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. It seems like the, the, the like once a month they reference them and then never mention yes. them again. They reference them when needed. Yeah. Adam Copeland versus a mystery opponent from the House of Black. It's kind of funny because on, on uh, Collision, I'm pretty sure they said Buddy Matthews. But then, like, the announcers were saying it was going to be a mystery. It, the, the, and so I went into this thinking it was going to be Buddy Matthews, and it was. Well, it was. They officially said it would be a mystery, but they all but told you yes. it would be Buddy Matthews. So, yes, the, the mystery opponent was Buddy Matthews. Malachi did an audio promo on a video it was supposed to play, but it didn't. But he wants to watch his men destroy Adam's mind. Very rewarding. So Adam Copeland and Buddy Matthews had a good 10-minute match. Unfortunately, they were out there for 20-plus minutes. Yeah, and it was also weird because it was a good match, but they were in Canada, and Adam Copeland got blasted with the mist, and so he is now an edgy, mildly heelish character. He's he's changed, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So he's kind of working, not like a heel gimmick, but he's certainly got an edge to him. And then they do the spot where they do a double high cross, and they both go down, and Buddy starts coughing up blood, supposedly. So this was actually like a, a WWE thing. Remember back when Vince wanted no wrestling during commercials for a little while? He just totally lost his mind. Yeah. And so they had come up with 8,000 different ideas to pause the match to go to commercial. Right. Well, they did that here. Buddy is spitting up blood, and the doctor comes in to check on him. We'll be right back. Go to commercial. Doctor says you can wrestle. And so from that point forward, Buddy is valiantly fighting with a severe stomach injury. He's been coughing up blood. He's fighting his way through the pain. Even the announcers are, are like, that's a kind of a bad crew, but yeah, you gotta you gotta give this guy credit. <laughs> like, what? And so, you know, he's he's fighting from underneath, he's making a comeback, and then uh, finally he gets speared. And then Copeland in Canada. He starts going and getting chairs. He's going to kill this guy. He pinned him after the spear. Yeah. You know, that, that, that makes it worse. But yeah, so he pins him. He starts getting these chairs. Yeah. And then the lights go out, and uh, Malachi appears in the ring, and he whispers something to to Adam. And then Buddy's like on his knees begging him to hit him with the chair, you know, turn to the dark side. Mm-hmm. And like Adam's thinking about it, but then the lights go out and they vanish. And so the point of all of this is, I don't really care about any of that, but I got to mention it because this crowd was dead for this match. Mm-hmm. They were so dead that I was like, how many people are in this building? I went and looked it up because I thought, is this another show with like 2,200 people? But in fact, they had over 4,000, but it sounded empty during this match. Like the fans weren't into this mildly heelish Adam Copeland Having a match with Buddy that I guess they knew he was going to win, and, you know, Buddy as a heel fighting back as a baby, it just didn't work is the point. And the crowd made that clear. It did not work. And uh, it was fascinating watching this show. We'll get into this. But this was a show that wanted to be, they wanted theatrics and to be played to. And the more silliness the wrestlers did, the better reaction they got. The more violent physical intensity they did, the less reaction they got. And this is like 20 minutes of violent physical intensity with very little uh, 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 emotion or, uh, or theatrics or that kind of thing. So the crowd was not that much into it. Copeland wins, goes to kill him afterwards like a dick. House of Black wants him to turn. He hesitates. They leave. It's left up in the air. There was also another spot where uh, Buddy hits him with a kick and he goes to hit the ropes for a PK. But right before he kicks him, he stops. And he puts him in a chin lock. Yeah. And some dude in the crowd, like, it's quiet enough. One guy goes, boring! Like, it's so loud. And I thought, it was only one guy, but I'm not sure I've ever heard someone chant boring on an AEW show. Rare. Very rare. So I thought, okay, well, that's like kind of a heat thing, you know? He teased a kick, but then put him in a headlock. But then he laid in that (laughs) chin lock. Minutes on end. And he laid there and laid there and laid there. And I'm like, what in the fuck is going on? We have a long chin lock in an AEW match. I, granted, it's two guys that like spent most of their careers in WWE. But still, I was like, my God, 
This does not work on this show. Get out of this chin lock. Yeah, it did not work. If you're going to rewatch this, just skip to the last. There were two commercial breaks. Skip to the second commercial break. Watch everything after that. That's part, that part's pretty good. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.